Hello, I'm Julia Jacklin and I'm an amoeba and this is what's in my bag. Okay, I'm gonna start with um, Fiona Apple, Extraordinary Machine. What'd you do that for? Saying there's nothing to it, then letting it go by the door. My first love uh, showed me this record when I was 13, and it blew my mind. And I think it informed, like, Particularly what I love about song lyrics more than anything. Not About Love was the first song I ever learned on guitar. I can't stop falling and for my high school like graduating performance, I sung Parting Gift. It was very dramatic. But I love what we started, it says stop, but we went on. It ended bad, but I love what we started. I love this record. I'm very grateful to it and to Fiona for making it. Uh, I wanted to pick an Edith Piaf record. Je vous connais, Milor, vous ne m'avez jamais vu. Je ne suis qu'une fille du port, une ombre de la rue. Kind of a similar time, maybe when I was 15, I discovered Edith Piaf and I think she changed my view on singing. I, I, because I came from a classical background, I always thought that singing had to be kind of emotionless, but perfect. I thought that was good singing, that I had to kind of strip my own selfhood out of it and just like be really on the notes and just be a perfect singer. And when I heard Edith Piaf sing, I was like, oh, like she has such incredible technique, but she is bringing like her entire heart and soul and everything in between into the song. And that's what makes her so amazing to listen to. When I was 17, I wrote a one-woman play on the life of Edith Piaf, and I performed it at high school. And I'm pretty sure it was really bad, but I was deep. I was really deep into Edith Piaf. Yeah, I sung Padam Padam in high school as well. So, thank you, Edith. Oh my God. Silver chair, diorama. Across the night, across the night, across the night, I, 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 I'm a big silver chair fan. I think this record has some of the most beautiful melodies ever written. <laughs> big call, but I believe it. Um, my dad bought me Frog Stomp. That was like the first CD I ever had. And this was so ambitious and like they were 22 and they just kind of did something pretty epic. And it was like mixing orchestral music with rock music at, the, at that time wasn't like super cool. And so I think a lot of people think, I don't know, had opinions about it, but I think it's really good. It's really beautiful. The Greatest View is an incredible song. So thank you. I picked uh, Iris Dement, Infamous Angel. At the bus depot, for Infamous Angel, destination home. Iris Dement's just one of my favorite songwriters of all time. I could have picked any of her records, but this one is, I'm pretty sure it's all live. Her song, Our Town, is like, a classic, a modern classic. Can't you see the sun setting down on our town, on our town, good night. Yeah, she's just kind of like the songwriter I aspire to be.
What is it about her songwriting that you like? I think I'm not much of a poetic songwriter. Like I feel like I'm pretty direct. When I was younger, I wrote, I tried to be poetic and I tried to like add a lot of like, you know, flowery language to my writing because I thought that's what good songwriting was. I thought it was had to be kind of impenetrable. I thought it was better if people don't understand it <laughs> or something. I like her songwriting because you know exactly what she's saying and it doesn't make it any less interesting. It actually just is so generous. It like reaches in and it, and it holds you. And I think that's, yeah, it just kind of made me feel like I could write a bit plainer and it still would be good and it still would be powerful and it would still be like art. So thank you, Iris. These are the hills that I call home. The drifters. Nobody but me. Nobody. Oh, me. Nobody. Oh, me. Nobody but me. I think their songs are the first ones I really learnt to sing as a child and really made me fall in love with melody and harmony. They make me think of my family. It's like my parents' first dance was to a drifter song, um, This Magic Moment. I listen to the drifters a lot when I'm on tour because it makes me feel um, connected to my family and connected to my childhood home. Thank you, the Drifters. So die, say the last dance for me. I picked Laura Jean, an Australian songwriter. This album in particular, Amateurs. This album is incredible. I think it's one of the greatest albums of our time and I wish more people listened to it. Laura Jean makes me want to be a better songwriter every day. I probably listen to this record more than any other record in the last few years. Just, yeah, she's incredible. She's a huge inspiration to me and I'm so grateful that she writes the music she does. I recently sung with her and I really fucked it <laughs> because I was really nervous and because she's my hero. So thank you, Laura. Sorry for messing up your show. Um, yeah, please listen to this record, everyone. Did you tell her that she was your hero? No, I try to keep it cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it gets a bit um, uncomfortable, especially if you're like backstage with the person and you just want to be like, we're all just here doing a job. But no, I love Laura Jean. I picked a couple of soundtracks. I picked the classic Goldblum Suspiria soundtrack. Weirdly, this record was very inspirational to my last album, which you won't hear, but more spiritually. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna make any sense. Like you listen to my music and you're like, what? <laughs> this doesn't sound anything like Goblin, but it was like, I think I'm trying to work hard to make less pretty music. I think my default is to make things that sound really pretty and because I'm a people pleaser and I, I'm scared to do things that people won't like immediately. And I was listening to this a lot when I was making my record because it's not pleasing. It sounds scary. It sounds crazy. And it kind of helped me to <laughs> just make little decisions in my record process that was slightly less people pleasing. 
I put it on in the studio, like to the producer. I was like, yeah, like, let's just listen to Goblins, like get in the mood. And he was really confused and he didn't understand. <laughs> I also picked the Minari soundtrack. Masseri, Masseri. I went and saw this film twice in the cinema because of the soundtrack. And it was just one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard. I love it when you see a film where you just, you think about the music more than you think about the film. That's as simple as it is. I just thought it was like incredibly beautiful and it really moved me and I still think about it. But I don't listen to it very often because it's, I think it's too beautiful. I got to cover more of my childhood faves. This record, Zap Mama. They're from Belgium. And I grew up listening to this record with my dad. Uh, it makes me think of my dad. Yeah, it just has some of the most interesting song structures and the most beautiful harmonies. I also listen to this record a lot when I'm away because it makes me feel connected to my family. And um, yeah, it's just one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard, as I keep saying. I picked a hooray for the Riff Raff record, the Navigator in particular. To my brothers and my sisters, I say, Balante! I love all their records, I could have picked anyone, but I've just been following their music for my whole music life. Like before I was making, before I made my first record, I was listening to Hooray for the Roof Raff and I don't know, I think Alinda is just like an incredible songwriter. This record is great. Nothing's gonna change that girl. Incredible. Oh, nothing's gonna change that girl. Well, nothing's gonna change that girl. Palante, incredible. I'm just grateful they're making music at the same time as I'm making music because then, yeah, I get to have a little hero out there, which is so cool. I picked Blackout by Britney Spears. <laughs> I love this record. I listen to it regularly. I've always been a Britney fan, I always will be. Yeah, some of the songs on this are great. I think everybody can agree that Break the Ice is one of the greatest pop songs of the last 20 years. <laughs> I'm just saying stuff, but I think that's true. This came out at like, an interesting time of her life. I mean, she's always gotten a lot of shit, but she was definitely getting a lot of shit when this came out. And I think it's just really tasteful. And it's really, it's really interesting production. I think the lyrics are really good. It's just, it's a great record. So thank you, Brittany. Okay, the last ones are just I just the absolute classics. Post. My love is so bad. Living by I think there's people who are like her who make really interesting, weird, crazy music, and I think they're so cool. And I'm not one of them. Like I, I make, I play like folk music <laughs> or like I don't know I play pretty simple music like I don't know how she arranges the songs it's magic to me it's mystery her music just always makes me feel so excited about being alive and yeah this song I guess was my introduction so it's very special to me and it's just the coolest army of me has to be one of the coolest sounding songs in the world
and I stupidly covered it once <laughs> and it's nowhere near as cool, but I'm just so grateful this record exists and that she exists. So I, yeah, it's so, thank you for doing what you do. Uh, uh, and another classic, I just picked Harvest New Young. See the lonely boy out on the weekend Trying to make it pay When I made my album Crushing, I wanted the whole album just to sound like um, Out on the Weekend and but I felt really stupid about that because I thought, oh, you're a folk country songwriter and you want your music to sound like Neil Young. It's like, yeah, cool. So does everyone. But when I was making Crushing and I was explaining to Burke Reid who produced it, like what I wanted it to sound like, but using all of these other descriptors, he was like, I think, I think we should try and make it sound like Out on the Weekend by Neil Young. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> so I'm grateful that this exists, yeah. So I, that's everything I've chosen today. So thank you. Thank you so much for talking with us today. Yeah. <laughs>